So which of these is an asset according to the conceptual framework? Well, the things that you're looking for are, do we control it? Will it bring in probable future economic benefit? Okay, so let's have a look at all of these. First one, a skilled and efficient workforce. Well, the trouble with the workforce is you don't control them because they can leave. So no control there, and so therefore you don't put the workforce as an asset on your balance sheet. Second one, a highly lucrative contract signed during the year, but it hasn't commenced yet. It commences shortly after the year end. So we haven't done any work for it, so therefore at the moment it can't be an asset. It can be an asset next year, but not this year. Part C, a government grant relating to the purchase of an item of plant several years ago. Well, we would have received that government grant several years ago, so therefore it's not going to bring in probable future economic benefit. It already has. It would have been an asset many years ago, uh, not now. Part D, a receivable. Well, a receivable brings in probable future economic benefit from a customer which has been sold to a finance company, though. OK, it's been sold to a finance company. So you might think, well, we won't get the benefit. We don't control it. But the finance company can have full recourse to us. The finance company can give it back to us. And so therefore, we are taking the majority of the risks. If we take the majority of the risks, then it's similar to control. And we will get the future economic benefit from it because the opposite of the risk comes the return. Okay, that question would be different. So the answer D, but the question would be different, or the answer to D would be different if it was without recourse. Because if it's without recourse, they can't give us it back. And so, therefore, we wouldn't be taking any risks. And so, therefore, it wouldn't be ours. But in this case, we are keeping the risks, so it remains our asset. So the answer is D.